Hi, this is a demo of using OpenShift with NetApp Storage. In this demo, I'll show deploying a guestbook application on top of a MySQL database on the OpenShift platform with the state sitting on NetApp Storage on the back end. First thing I'll do is I'll log in the OpenShift user interface. So once I log in, I see a list of projects. A project is a logical grouping of resources um, that allows you to categorize and segmentize your work. Projects can also have quotas applied to them and use role-based access control. So it's a very easy and helpful way to, to use the share platform uh, with different teams in a, in a safe manner. So I'll go ahead and create a new, new, new project and I'll give it a name and of guestbook. Now when, that, when it creates that, it's an empty project. There are no resources in it. The first thing I need to do is add a MySQL database. Now OpenShift has a set of templates in a catalog that are preloaded. You can also create your own, but uh, it turns out for MySQL, there is a, there's a one in the, in the catalog that works just fine. So I'll go ahead and pick it, MySQL persistent. That means it's gonna use persistent storage. Uh, and I can see some settings that I'm allowed to complete. So how much memory it needs to have. And I'm gonna go ahead and enter a username and put a database name for our guestbook application. We can also see a capacity. I'll go ahead and put 77 gigabytes because you know we have a pretty popular guestbook. Now you can notice here that I'm not being asked any other details uh, about storage. Uh, if I click create here, that's actually telling OpenShift to go ahead and, and start creating this uh, or fulfilling this request, basically taking the state that I've given to it and trying to make that desired state the actual state. And if I look at the root of the project, we'll see that uh, one of the things that it's doing, it's currently in the pulling state. So that means it's actually fetching the MySQL base container in order to start. Now, we know that this store, this container also requested some storage. So if I look at it, we can see it's in this creating phase right now on, on this specific uh, node in my OpenShift cluster. But if I look at volumes, you can see that there's actually a persistent volume claim uh, that has been uh, uh, created and fulfilled. So if I go ahead and click on this, I can actually see the details of my, my claim. So I have a uh, persistent volume claim called MySQL and it's actually bound to a volume. Now the binding to the volume, that's what Trident did. So Trident is our dynamic provisioner. And if I look on my backend array, in this case that storage class uh, maps to a solid fire array, certain QoS settings, and I look at the volumes on that array, click refresh there, we can see that there's a volume called guestbook that's been created that is 72 gigabytes in size. This is in base 10, the 77 is in base two. So it's, it is correct, our, our volume was created. Now notice that the administrator, or the, the user didn't have to specify any details or talk to anyone, it just happened uh, as part of his overall request. So if I go back, let's see, it's, it's in a pulling state right now. So pulling means that the, the container is actually being fetched from the registry. Now my registry is, is actually on the internet it looks like that's taking a little bit of time today. So maybe we'll show provisioning of, of, of storage in another way. Uh, I can also go to this storage view and see the claim that I had submitted and that is yeah, fulfilled for my MySQL database, but I can also request uh, storage independently. So I have a few storage classes here. These first three are all on a SolidFire backend with different QoS settings, but I also have the Silver Shared. Now this one is actually on a ONTAP system with NFS. So if I go ahead and request it here, I want a 77 gigabyte uh, silver uh, of a, a claim named silver on this storage class and I hit create, we can see that it's in the pending state and a few seconds later, it's, it's also been satisfied. So if I go look on my ONTAP system and I look, I can refresh there and I see that, yep, there is indeed a volume that's been created over here for my, my silver request. Now that's, that's really quite nice. Now if I decided that this was actually just you know playing around, I don't want it, I can go ahead and delete it. Uh, Trident is gonna see that it's been deleted and is then going to uh, delete it on the backend storage. Now there's also a configuration setting that you can uh, say on a per volume basis not to delete it. So if you didn't want it to be quite as dynamic, you know maybe you're afraid of a user deleting data accidentally, you can set that to, uh, to retain the volume then you would need to purge this manually. But in my case here, it's, it's gonna be direct integration. If you say delete and open shift, it's gonna delete it on the back end. I refresh, I can see the volume is gone. It's really tight integration.
So let's go back and see if our MySQL database is started by now. Ah, great. We can see it's now in the running state. If I click on it, I can see that it's running on the 3 Docker 6 host. One of the things I like about OpenShift is you have direct access to the logs of that container. So I can see here in the logs that uh, MySQL is ready for connections. That sounds great. Uh, I can also look at the terminal. Maybe we're curious to see, did this really land on that on the right volume, on the right place? And I can see here there's a volume called SDA that's uh, you know 77 gigabytes in size. It's got you know a couple hundred megabytes already used. That's where my database files are. So, so indeed, my database files are sitting on the NetApp storage. That's great. So let's go ahead and add the front end now. So I'll go back to add to project. And on the front end, I've actually already uh, created a template for our guestbook front end web server. So I'll just go ahead and select it. You can see it's quite similar to last time. I'll go ahead and put in the password that we need to get in the database and uh, click create. So this is creating now the, the guestbook web server that's going to talk to that database. Now you can see that they're actually in two different groups here. If I click this group service button, something I like to do, then I can, I can kind of get everything in one view because these two containers are, are, or pods are actually related to each other, right? The backend database and the front end server. You'll see that there's also a link here. So this link is actually going to allow us to reach this application from uh, outside the cluster. So if I click it, we can see that, oh, okay, the application is not available. So right now the, the OpenShift load balancer is unable to find a, a pod, so uh, an application that's, that's, in, that's ready to serve traffic. And if I look here, it says it's in a not ready state. So I'll go ahead and click on it. And we can see that this container is actually running, uh, but the ready state is false. Now this is something OpenShift gives you uh, also natively is, is uh, service tests. So I can see here there are two probes, a readiness probe and a liveness probe. So these, these probes right now, something here is failing. It's, it's basically we're trying to make a connection to the container and although it's running, it's not actually uh, answering these probes with, in a successful way. So what I usually do then is I just check the logs. Again, very quick and easy. And in the log I see here, ah, something about table doesn't exist. Ah, yeah, I forgot. The first time we created our database, as a one-time action, the, the guy who wrote this, this guestbook app, he told me I needed to create some tables. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, and just, just create those. He, he said there's a small script you could just run to do it. I'll do that and uh, to spell it right. And if I do that, it'll, it'll go ahead and create some tables for me, I think. Yep, there we go. So we got some tables created. Let's go back to the pod and we'll see uh, we'll, we'll see if our, our pod is in a, a, a healthy state or not now. Uh, now we can see that ready is true. So let's go ahead and see if our database is working. Uh, it is. So I can go ahead and enter names and uh, we, can, we, can, we can see that, that the, the database and everything seems to be working well. So that's, that's great. Well, let's see what happens, uh, show some features of OpenShift that you get kind of out of the box. So this, uh, this front end uh, guestbook application, I'm gonna go ahead and click this delete here. So if I delete it, what do you think is gonna happen? You know, If I look at my application now and I refresh, we see it's gone unavailable again. Well, that's because there's no pod on the back end that's able to serve this traffic because I killed it. Um, but what you can also see here is that OpenShift recognized that the desired state of having one copy of this guestbook application wasn't being met because I deleted it. But that could have also been it, it failed on its own or it was killed or the host happened to die, right? Something else could happen. And we can see it's actually started a new one. We can see this new one has started and is also in a, in a ready state. So if I go back, we should see our application is back up and running again. And it is. And I can, I can go ahead and enter more names and, and you can see everything, the, the query, the reads and the writes of the database are working correctly. Now, if we don't want any interruption at all, that's also something that's easy to do. You can see right now we have one pod. I can just increase this to two pods. If I do that, then OpenShift is going to go ahead and schedule that container uh, a second time in my cluster. So what that means is that now if one of these happens to go away, the other one can still serve traffic. So this is a very easy way to scale our application higher as demand uh, requires or to make sure we have multiple replicas so that we never have any downtime. So I can see here now two are running. If I come to my application, now they're actually being... Uh, balanced uh, across across two different uh, uh, instances of my front end. 
Now, if I come in here and I delete one of these front ends now, they'll still be one up. So we'll go ahead and delete one. And what we can see here is no problem. The database is, is still, everything is still up and accessible. So, and meanwhile, of course, OpenShift recognized that my desired state of two wasn't met and it's, it's making that so as well. So get the nice resiliency kind of out of the box, resiliency scaling with OpenShift. Now, what happens if I do the same thing over in my database? So right now my database is running on this three Docker six node. Um, and let's go ahead and delete it. So that's basically going to delete that, that running container. Now the storage is not going to be deleted, but my database server basically is. So you can see that it, it, it's, uh, if, I, if I go ahead and try to, try to, to, to uh, add someone now, let's see what happens here. Probably going to get some kind of error. Yep, I got a server error. And the reason I did, of course, is that database was, was, uh, was in the process of getting restarted. You can see here the state is already in a ready state. If I just go ahead and retry my request, we'll see now that it'll succeed. You know, now Frederick has been in the list, all the other data. Now it was on the three Docker six host. Let's see if it happened to get scheduled on a different host. Now today it actually stayed on the same host. But what you may see is if you delete this, it may actually get, get restarted on another node. Kubernetes is gonna make sure the storage gets connected for you. You don't have to worry about that. So I showed you a few things on how really the integration is very tight and easy. Now, one other thing I like about OpenShift is at the end of the day, if you don't want this application anymore, you know, you're, you're just a, this was just a test and playing around, and I just go ahead and delete the project, everything is actually gonna get cleaned up for me automatically. So all the resources that I created in this, including the storage, are all gonna get cleaned up. So if I look at my, my guestbook application, of course, it's gonna be uh, you know, back gone, it's disappeared. If I go look at my storage system, this 82 uh, gigabyte device there, refresh, it's all gone. So this is really, really great in an environment that's dynamic where people are creating and destroying applications and especially you know, DevOps environment, software development environment, testing environments. You can really see the benefit of this tight integration. It also makes sure you don't have orphan storage. So it really keeps the state together. I like to think of this as really an autonomous system, right? Where storage is really tightly integrated with OpenShift. And this is something that's really special about NetApp integration. And you saw that this is possible both with SolidFire and our, uh, our ONTAP system E-Series as well. I just didn't show it today. Well, I hope you enjoyed this demo. And if you want more information, visit netapp.io. It's a website of ours that has lots of information about our container solutions. Thanks.